The last subject um, is defending the integrity of elections in Washtenaw County. Th these threats come from a great number of directions. And uh, I'd like to invite uh, Larry Kessenbaum and, and Golombiewski, I hope you pronounce it correctly, um, to unmute and make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eli. Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm Larry Kestenbaum. I'm the county clerk and register of deeds for Washtenaw County, which means I'm also the chief election official for the county. Uh, and the election system is a huge uh, uh, process. It's it's uh, uh, in, in most states. Uh, uh, you should understand the you have. You have I'm sorry. It, in most states, there is a there is a. I'm sorry. There, in most states, could everybody who is uh, uh, not muted please mute themselves? Sam Copey, you're one of them. A lot of background noise. Sam, please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Go for it, Larry. Yeah, in in in, in most in most states, the uh, the basically there's a county official who is in charge of elections and carries on all elections of every kind in the in the county. Uh, Michigan has a radically decentralized form, where um, uh, I have uh, I, I I'm the chief election official, but I'm really coordinating lots of other people. Uh, every city, every township clerk is involved with putting on elections, with determining polling places, with uh, hiring poll workers, and and all of those things. Uh, but but the critical part in what we were asked to, to discuss uh, today is that the certification of elections, once the everything is all done, every all the all the votes are in and all the ballots are in and so forth, and everything has been uh, uh, settled, everybody's gone home. But then the next day or the day after, um, the board of canvassers uh, come to examine uh, the the entire election. Uh, and and certify the results. And as I'm sure you've probably no noticed from the uh, uh, news at the state level and at uh, Wayne County, the board the board of canvassers is by law cons consists of two Democrats and two Republicans. Uh, and the um, um, and so ordinarily what we have is the uh, the board again they go through every precinct. Uh, they uh, they uh, basically they can order retabulations of a precinct if they think there's a problem. Uh, you know they they basically go through and, and try to resolve uh, issues uh, with uh, with precincts that happen that have had issues. Uh, and essentially they go through and and examine everything to their satisfaction. At the end of the process, then they certify the result and send it on uh, to the state. Or in the case of local elections, the the certification from the board of canvassers. Is uh, you know is the final word for the uh, uh, the outcome of the election, uh, and then any recounts that are demanded would come after the board of canvassers process. And the board of canvassers in a county has 14 days to do this work after the election. Uh, and historically, uh, you know, like the, the board of canvassers works uh, pretty harmoniously. Uh, you know, the you know the two Democrats and two Republicans. Many of these people were on the board of canvassers for for many years. Uh, they work well together. Uh, they would their their decisions would be almost invariably unanimous. It was it was relatively unusual to have any kind of disagreement among the board of canvasser members. Uh, and um, for example, at the at the end of the uh, process in uh, in 2020, uh, when the you know entire election was done, canvassed and so forth, the board of canvassers on their own motion and their own it was their idea. The four of them all signed a letter commending all the clerks and election workers in Washtenaw County for having run a great, you know, and clear and clean and transparent election. Uh, and the uh, and that was, you know, signed by the two Republicans and the, and the two Democrats. Well, the what's been happening ar around the state uh, uh, that is somewhat worrisome is the replacement of Republican members, of the, the, the members of the Board of Canvassers are nominated by party chairs and then are selected by the Board of Commissioners technically. Uh, and so each party chair is expected to come up with uh, uh, three candidates uh, for the, uh, for, for a particular, for when a seat opens up and they're staggered terms. Uh, so that for example, a Republican seat opens up and the Republican chair would come up with three names uh, of uh, of potential candidates for the board of canvassers, and uh, and then 
you know, and then I, in consultation with the Board of Commissioners, would select one of those three people. Uh, and and to our our, our disappointment, uh, the um, in the last go round, uh, Dan Smith, who is a former a Republican, former County Commissioner, and who's been a very good canvasser on a, on the Board of Canvassers, he was not on the list of nominees for the Republicans. Uh, and instead, there were three people we were not familiar with, uh, and one of them was chosen and was appointed. Uh, but uh, again, we're dependent on the the nominations from the party as to who who the uh, uh, who the canvassers uh, will be. Uh, you know, you know, uh, four years ago, I'm mean, sorry, in 2020, we had the issue of uh, the uh, you know this notion that that Michigan was uh, had some kind of problem with its election. And at the state level, there's the state board of canvassers, which takes all of the results from all the counties together and examines them and, and, uh, and, and then basically votes to certify the entire election. And one of the Republican canvassers withheld his vote, Norm Schenkel, and, and refused to certify the election. Uh, and uh, the, one of the other Republicans, Aaron Van Langeveld, uh, uh, did uh, vote to certify the election and was uh, denounced by some of the, uh, again, the Trump supporters and was subsequently uh, not renewed for his position on the State Board of Canvassers. Uh, so this is, this, these circumstances have led to uh, questions about what, what were likely to happen, you know, in, in, in subsequent elections if we have, you know, for, basically you need a majority vote on the board of canvassers to certify an election, and if the Republicans refuse to certify, uh, then then there's the question of what happens uh, next. The uh, in in 2020 in Wayne County, there was the two Republican canvassers uh, initially refused to certify, and 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 uh, uh, and and the reaction was, you know, it was tremendous. People were saying, you know, what are you nuts? What's going? You, know, you were here for the whole thing. You didn't you didn't raise any objections, and only now you're saying there's a problem with the election. Uh, and finally, they were persuaded to uh, change their minds and vote to certify the election. Subsequently, these uh, the uh, um, uh, the woman who whose term came up next as a as a Republican canvasser, um, uh, even though she had initially refused to uh, to certify. Uh, because she had ultimately agreed to certify, she was removed and uh, replaced by some other Republicans. So th th these are worrisome uh, uh, trends. Uh, Ed is going to talk about some of the details of how this all how this all comes together with uh, in, here in Washtenaw County. Ed is the is Chief Deputy Clerk Register, and he's also the Director of Elections for the county. Go ahead. Thanks, Larry. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you've already made mention of the fact that the work of the Board of Canvassers, um, you know, essentially is ministerial. Uh, they are a board that essentially checks to make sure that paperwork has been completed properly, has been uh, submitted to the county and to the uh, Board of Canvassers, and has the authority to review precincts that are out of balance, which would mean that uh, the number of ballots cast uh, does not equal the number on the list of voters, and to make corrections uh, to those lists or to order a retabulation of a precinct where necessary. Uh, a big thing to point out is that uh, it, it is settled uh, that the Board of Canvassers does not have the authority to investigate claims of fraud uh, that may or may not be brought up over the course of the canvas or prior to it. Uh, their job, again, is to, is to take a look at the paperwork and assure uh, that it has been completed properly. And they have an obligation after they have completed that work to certify uh, to the state, in the cases of uh, state and federal offices, uh, the vote totals that were, that were cast. Uh, so, you know, they have a few other uh, roles and responsibilities as well. They'll be going around the county uh, over the course of the winter to certify uh, ballot containers uh, and make sure that they're in their proper working order uh, they obviously conduct recounts as well, but their main role and uh, and and you know the the focus of attention on on the boards of canvassers around the state next year or this year uh, will be in their handling of of certification and and the canvas process. Uh, this has not been you know up until 2020 a politicized process. Uh, it's often one that goes uh, relatively overlooked. Um, I can tell you you know in my 10 years now here at the county. 
uh, over the course uh, of time prior to November 2020, we had almost no attendees uh, from the public during Canvassers proceedings. That certainly changed uh, in November 2020, where we were visited by quite a few members of the public, uh, both present to, you know, to, uh, I guess, present their skepticism, uh, but also those in support uh, of, of uh, the work of the Board of Canvassers. And, you know, going forward, uh, the attention that's going to be paid to what the boards of canvassers in Washtenaw County and across the state are doing um, is going to be quite high. And we certainly welcome uh, attention from membership here uh, in those proceedings and, uh, and, uh, and, and welcome attendees to those meetings so that you can observe uh, and also, you know, uh, I guess, reassure yourselves, others, and, uh, uh, and perhaps other skeptical members of the public uh, about what exactly the work of the Board of Canvassers is and, and just basically how pro forma uh, their work ought to be. But uh, uh, Larry, I don't know if you wanna discuss uh, what, you know, what would happen, I suppose, uh, if a county Board of Canvassers failed to certify um, uh, an election this year or, or in the future. Uh, but essentially, you know, there, there are safeguards in place uh, that would you know, provide for another authority, essentially the State Board of Canvassers to step in uh, in that event. But uh, I'll kick it back to you, Larry, you can take it. From right, the, 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 essentially the law gives a County Board of Canvassers 14 days uh, to, um, to, to complete its work. And if at the end of 14 days that work is not completed, the, what the statute contemplates is that all that material is basically sent to the state uh, for the state board of canvassers to complete it, and and obviously, uh, you know, the amount of material we're talking about again, every precinct has you know has like a ream of paper involved with it, uh, and the the um, uh, and the state would be overwhelmed if if even one county uh, uh, really did that. So what the uh, uh, what is more likely to happen is that the bureau of elections at the state level would uh, would would probably try to kick it back to the county and. Uh, uh, and and have the board of canvassers be the um, uh, representative of the of the of the state board of canvassers to again to try to continue and wrap up their their work. Uh, you know, if the if the one thing that uh, uh, that is holding it up are just the the, uh, the you know two members who are refusing to certify it. Uh, I mean, there would be a, a nightmare scenario of lots of counties where two members of the board of canvassers. Uh, refuse to certify, and the uh, uh, and 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 all of these go to the state, and the state is overwhelmed, and, and it goes into the news, and people have a sense of, oh my God, Michigan's election is in complete disarray. You know, the you know the Trumpists were right. Uh, the uh, but again, it would be disarray brought about by uh, you know partisan um, uh, you know partisan activity, but the the. Um, uh, there's also the, uh, uh, and, and this was this was uh, uh, brought up in, again after 2020, which was that if the board of canvassers fails to do its job as a ministerial uh, 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 action, as 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 Ed said, that that there would be a resort to uh, to bringing a judge in to basically do the to essentially certify the election uh, um, uh, when the board of canvassers has failed to. Uh, and the uh, that may, uh, you know, I'm not. We're not completely clear on whether that's something that would happen at the county level or at the state level. Uh, uh, but the uh, uh, I think that that at the time that this was happening in 2020, uh, I was hearing a lot of confidence from the Bureau of Elections in Lansing that. That that, that that the problem could be dealt with by judicially, and the, a judge would have the have the authority, you know, to issue orders and uh, you know mandamus or whatever to um, to force uh, uh, the um, uh, certification. Uh, again, we're talking about you know in an election where you know without any particular problems, uh, as there was in in 2020, there were really very few problems around the state. It was a very uh, a smooth election compared even to past elections in the state. Uh, you know, over time, the, the election process has become uh, much more standardized and much more, um, uh, you know, the likelihood of, of errors is, uh, is actually quite a bit less than it used to be. 
I, I, I personally was involved in going through, I think it was the 1990 and 1994 elections, uh, after all the canvases were completed and finding all the mistakes that were made. Um, and, and some of the mistakes were pretty shocking. Uh, and some of them involve thousands of votes. Uh, you know, that kind of thing doesn't happen anymore. And the, the, uh, and the reason is that the, the, uh, the software is standardized, the equipment is standardized, uh, the handling of, of, of numbers is standardized uh, in ways that uh, they weren't standardized before. And the, um, so the, the uh, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a question, would it go to the court of claims? I don't think so. I think the court of claims is spe specifically about monetary claims uh, against the state, but presumably it would go to the Ingham County Circuit Court or something of that nature if it was a state matter. Um, but we're, um, uh, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic that even if there was there was a lot of you know militant opposition on the part of, of Republicans that that would uh, um, that that could be overcome again judicially. But the the other the other aspect of this that I'm I'm I've been thinking about is that is that what we're really talking about you know Trump is not not going to be on the ballot until at the least uh, uh, 2024. And so all of these new members of the board of canvassers are going to have to go through primaries and the 2022 general election and so forth. And they're going to be gaining experience and, and coming to realize uh, how well the process works. And it may be that as time goes on, people will come around uh, to understanding the process and not coming in with this ignorant notion of, oh, there's all this fraud. Uh, and uh, and so the the so we have uh, you know, quite a ways to go until uh, until we have p the potentiality of Donald Trump himself involved again. Uh, the 2022 election, um, uh, you know, obviously there's governor, there's you know, there's a lot of things on uh, 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 at stake. But I'm I'm I doubt that they're going to be again, again assuming uh, 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 that that uh, that that Gretchen Whitmer is reelected uh, that. The notion that of of Republican canvassers trying to hold that up the way they did the, the way they did in 2020 or the way they tried to do in 2020, uh, I don't see that happening. But, uh, the the other the other topic that we wanted to 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 address was the uh, the so-called secure MI vote uh, initiative that the uh, Republicans have been circulating, uh, in, encompassing a number of different. Um, uh, a number of different issues that were brought up in the legislature and either vetoed or never never passed uh, to you know that basically amount to voter suppression and, and interference with the election. I, I, I think Ed will give some details about what why we're so why we're so concerned about this proposal. Uh, I mean, chief among the reasons uh, is the change that would be made to the affidavit of voter not in possession of photo identification. Uh, as it stands right now, Michigan has what's called a soft photo ID law uh, that allows for voters that do not possess at the time that they are applying to vote uh, a photo ID uh, to sign an affidavit in lieu of, of presenting that. Uh, and what this petition would drive would do uh, is eliminate that, uh, that workaround essentially that would take away the ability to present uh, an affidavit in lieu of a photo ID. Voters without a photo ID uh, would be required to vote a provisional ballot, and then, and, 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 and in order to have that ballot counted, would have to appear at their city or township clerk's office within six days after the election uh, and present photo ID uh, so that it could be counted. Uh, we know that there are not overwhelming numbers of voters that rely on the affidavit of voter not in possession of photo ID, at least here in Washtenaw County, uh, but there are uh, voters that, that use that option every election. Uh, and we're, you know, just as much concerned about uh, the chaos and, you know, misunderstanding among the public when they go to vote uh, that would result from this, you know, fairly dramatic change to photo ID laws. Um, there are a number of other provisions that would create problems for election administrators, uh, particularly the requirement to have to pay to rent space, uh, the prohibition on um, outside funding uh, of elections. And this has been a very politicized issue. Uh, Washtenaw County and many municipalities within Washtenaw County 
uh, did receive grant funding from CTCL, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, uh, during the course of the November 2020 election. Uh, prior to that, I can't point to a, a, a time that, uh, that, you know, quote, outside funds uh, were accepted for election administration uh, purposes, but 2020 was un an unprecedented election year with a whole lot of unforeseen needs for financial resources. Uh, these funds were expended uh, in very benign ways. Quite frankly, Washtenaw County, we uh, used those funds to reimburse uh, the county for funds already spent to provision PPE uh, to all of the county's polling locations and precincts. Uh, other municipalities followed suit. Some of them purchased voting equipment. Uh, in all cases, the money uh, was used for purposes that were very worthwhile and quite frankly needed. Uh, and again, uh, during a year in which additional resources well beyond those that were originally budgeted uh, became necessary as a result of the pandemic. Uh, and I know, you know, we're, we're bumping up against uh, our time here, so I, I, I want to allow for any questions. I see there are a few in the chat, so, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps I'll stop right here, knowing that uh, we're, we're running short on time, and allow anybody uh, present today to answer, ask questions of uh, Larry or I. Yeah, before we do that, let me, let me just say that, uh, that the requirement for a provisional ballot is a tremendous overload of paperwork on election workers and so forth. There, there really should be no, you know, under current law, there's really almost no circumstances where you'd want a provision to have a provisional ballot. And it is, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's really, um, from an election administration standpoint, that would be, that would be a disaster. Uh, and the, the, other, the other aspect of this is that uh, the number of signatures that are required to put something on the ballot, of course, you know, the, the, the intent with this secure me vote uh, uh, proposal is that they're going to gather the signatures, present it to the legislature, have the legislature pass it without any opportunity for the, um, for the governor to veto it. Um, and, then, uh, and then Democrats presumably would then have to gather signatures to, uh, to oppose it, to, to actually put it on the ballot. Uh, and whenever that has happened, uh, we've prevailed. Uh, but the, um, uh, but there's a, there's, there's a problem, and that is that the, because the number of signatures required is based on the number of votes for governor, and the November 2018 election had a third more votes than any prior gubernatorial election, so that the number of signatures is correspondingly larger. And there's some question about whether the Republicans would be able to come up with enough signatures to do this. And then, of course, when it comes to be, if they do do it, and it comes to be our turn to gather signatures, then that's another huge effort to get more than, you know, basically 374,000 valid signatures uh, uh, to uh, to force to force a vote on it rather than let the uh, let it just be passed into law. So, thank you. I think I'm I'm um, going to allow for ten more minutes. Um, this is a Zoom meeting um, for questions. Uh, this is this is an extremely important subject. So, if you would please raise your hand if you have a question for Larry Kessenbaum or Ed Kalambuski. Um, I see no raised hands. Let me ask you one very quick question. Um, who was the individual at the state level who was responsible for taking action should the local um, boards of canvassers deadlock? So you, you, said, you said someone will decide, but didn't, didn't mention who. Um, well, the, the, the state director of elections is Jonathan Brader, who many of you may know. He's uh, the son of former uh, state Senator Elizabeth Brader. Uh, and, uh, and he's, probably the point person who, who who would be dealing with this if this if there was a crisis um, and he's essentially he works with the state board of canvassers and and largely you know in you know the election director has in has up to now directed you know has you know, essentially guided the board of canvassers uh, who are all you know of course inevitably like amateurs you know they uh, and um, um, in their deliberations uh, but the the uh, so if we were we were we were to have a two to two deadlock on the question of certifying the whole state, um, as we almost did in 2020, uh, I'm sure that he would be the one uh, uh, arranging for a lawsuit or something of that nature to um, uh, you know to basically bring a judge into the situation with the authority to to uh, force the certification. 
I see we do have a hand up now. Teresa Reed. I think actually it's, it's Dirk. Dirk is the one who's um, up next. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Larry Ed, thanks for great work as always. There's an MDP effort to around election certification. Are you guys tied into that? I heard nothing about that. Okay. Um, Thomas Knox has a hand up. I've, I've unmuted you. Thomas, I think you have to um, see, perhaps unmute yourself as well. Yes, thank you. Uh, as Dirk said, thank you very much, Larry. Uh, it's good to know that you're doing what you're doing. In the scenario you described about the deadlock, either at the county level or at the state level, is there any chance or precedent or ability for the state legislature to try and insert itself other than the no. director of elections? No. I mean, I, I, they might try, but that's, there, that's not in the law, and that would be... Uh, uh, and you know the other thing about the legislature, if you've ever dealt with the legislature, ever dealt with legislation, um, they don't have the ability to move fast. You know the uh, the 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 fastest uh, you know something that speeds through the legislature can take weeks. So the notion that they could you know in the in the brief time between the election and the end of the year that they could come up with uh, uh, you know some kind of action or try to try to change the law or something like that to uh, affected, I, I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Thank you. Teresa Reed, did you have a um, question you wanted to ask or is this from the previous discussion? No, this is, this is current, thanks, um, Eli. Real quick, um, Ed, uh, so we have more than 500 uh, precinct delegate slots available in Washtenaw County and have filled about 150. So we're eager to put the pedal to the metal on uh, filling those precinct delegate slots. Are we able to, do we have the mechanisms in place now that redistricting's done? Can we, can we start on that process of telling people with accurate information how to go about becoming a PD? Uh, yes, and also, um, you know, yes and no, I guess at the same time. So precinct changes are going to be made. Uh, and, ah. you know, there's, there's an absolute certainty that, that the precincts as they exist right now in Washtenaw County will change in some way. Uh, most of them won't. However, some will, specifically in the city of Ann Arbor uh, and in other areas of the county that were just more dramatically impacted by redistricting. Uh, there will be municipalities that are changing their precinct lines as a result of uh, districts that are now overlapping them in ways that they didn't used to that are now creating a split within those okay. precincts. Uh, we will know more. Uh, we've actually begun the process of surveying just exactly who uh, in the county, which municipalities are going to be making those changes, uh, and we'll have more information probably within the next couple of weeks now that uh, redistricting has been made more clear. Uh, of course, there are still possibilities, I suppose, that uh, the district lines as they are now uh, drafted or now approved could continue, could still change as a result of litigation. But uh, at this point, we are expecting um, that municipalities in Washtenaw County are going to be making those precinct changes. We'll have an idea of specifically where uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and folks can start filing at any point in time now. The deadline is May 3rd. Uh, but the other part that we are still uh, waiting here for is uh, the allocations. So uh, as you said, you know there are 500 something uh, positions uh, countywide, but uh, with every even year when precinct delegate elections occur, uh, there is a necessity for the county political party in this case now going forward uh, to actually allocate how many you know, precinct delegate positions will be in each precinct. So uh, we don't know that. That's going to be work that the, that the par party is doing um, over the course of the next couple of months. The deadline for us to receive that allocation is April 1st. Uh, but again, it is possible right now today uh, for someone to file uh, for a precinct delegate position if they would like to. It's just that there's a possibility that that information may change. Yeah, okay. it, it, and, 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 and just to say, just to say here that the that this is another example of how decentralized the election process is. That we have 26 cities and townships, and they each individually will determine their precincts, uh, and the and and they're determining them in in light of the boundaries that split them up. Whether whether those are state rep boundaries, county commission boundaries, school district boundaries, uh, and and so forth. Uh, so the the uh, typically the uh, uh, township and city clerks try to try to follow those boundaries so as not to have multiple ballots in a precinct. 
Okay, so so just sorry, one last like clarification. So if I as now like tomorrow I want to file to be a precinct delegate in say Ann Arbor um, two five, but then in two months that precinct doesn't exist anymore or I don't live in it. Um, how does that work then? I mean, should we? I'm trying to decide if we should encourage people to go ahead yeah. and file now to get ready or not. If that would the just cause more confusion. Yeah, the trouble is that the uh, that the uh, new legislation was just passed, which would basically, as I interpret it, uh, if you if you file a, 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 a petition for a precinct delegate and it's for the wrong precinct, then it's invalid. You have to have yeah. the right precinct on it, and right. and and the precinct numbers, uh, you know, are likely to change between now and and April first, um, oh. and. I mean, the, the, hopefully, the deadline for you know for actually getting all the precincts set up and 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 finalized is before that. Uh, and typically, uh, for the Democratic Party, Doug Cohn, I mean, for Michael Mike Cohn, uh, Michael Cohn uh, is the one who figures that out all in terms of all the math and all the different pieces and parts. Uh, and um, but it's uh, 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 that's that's something that is all so so yeah now i i don't think if, if for people who are in an area where precinct lines are likely to change i wouldn't encourage them to file yet yeah okay great thanks so much for your answers and for your all your work you guys both of you thank you we have time for one last question josephine Rood hasn't spoken yet at this meeting so josephine i am going to unmute you you have to unmute yourself okay can you hear me yes you're yes. fine okay just to, back to the boards of canvassers for a moment. I'm just curious: um, the is it in the state constitution that the that the, the board that, that this is how elections are certified, or is that something that could be changed by the legislature? I don't think it's constitutional, but it's hard to imagine an all you know a, a a really robust alternative to it. I mean, you have to have something that is at least theoretically neutral or balanced in order to uh, to certify an election that you 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 don't want to have one party be able to certify an election all by themselves uh, no no i wouldn't want that <laughs> so yeah. the the uh, so the the process uh uh i mean it it w even if it's not established in the constitution it's very long established to be the way it is and 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 the um and these things are are you know, I mean, there, there's, for example, a lot of things in Michigan election law that you think, gosh, you know, why do we have this? But it's, it seems to be politically impossible to make changes to it. Um, you know, like the business about unrecountable precincts or the business of if you sign a petition twice, both of your both of your signatures are invalid uh, 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 kinds of rules that Michigan has that are unusual compared to other states. And yet, you know, we're kind of stuck with them. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. I think at this at this point, I'm going to have to stop the meeting. Um, I believe that we're going to return to all the issues that were discussed in future programs. I want to thank Larry Kestenbaum and Ed Kalambuski for taking time out of your Saturday to join us. We really appreciate it. Um, let, let me let me also say that if you have additional questions uh, about elections or about anything about my office, uh, you know, again, feel free to contact me or contact Ed uh, uh, to raise those issues, and we can you know, we'll hopefully uh, help you with those. Thank you so much. I just want to thank all the other speakers. Um, I realize you're all busy and we appreciate you taking the time to join us. Take care. <laughs>